here we have uh, the files for the acoustic examples. It's a cylindrical wave in 2D. Um, we'll go through the ge geometry first in trellis. There's a, a example trellis file, uh, which is called domain.ju. So let's have a look what is in there. Uh, a few parameters created, and then we're creating vertices, creating curves, uh, and uh, creating surfaces from the curves. I will just show you uh, the principle uh, of how that works very quickly. Um, and uh, you can actually use the journal file uh, in order to um, try this at home. Uh, so here is trellis. We can um, create geometry also from creating primitives. So if we build up um, from two vertices, uh, we can actually create a vertex, vertex by geometry. So we, we can pick coordinates. Uh, so we can click apply. Uh, we have one point. Let's say we want at coordinate x1, we want another point, uh, and uh, maybe we want another point at 1, 1. Uh, we have three points now. Uh, we can also create curves. Uh, so we can create a curve from, uh, from a line, uh, and we'll build it by vertex IDs. So we can actually select our vertices here. Um, with control, we can select two, hit apply. Uh, in the virtual machine, I shouldn't press control. Um, so between one and three, we can also create a line and another line between two and three. So we have three lines now, uh, and we can also create a surface. Um, from bounding curves. So here we can create, uh, select our line IDs. Curves one, two, and three, it should be, now we have a surface. Uh, so this is uh, a simple simple way where how you can geom uh, generate geometry from primitives. So you always start with vertices, points, uh, then lines, and then surfaces. Uh, this is the only new thing I wanted to show you. You can actually see the geometry we want to use in this example from running the journal file. Uh, let's do this quickly. I'll open it in the journal editor and run it. Uh, so you see the geometry. Let's run it. We create a few points uh, and we create a mesh. Um, you see here we have created the mesh. Um, we, we have created a circular arc here uh, and uh, we use one fourth of the domain. So we will excite uh, circular waves here at the excitation line here now displayed in red and they will propagate into the domain. Uh, the other new thing I've shown, uh, I've used in this example uh, is actually uh, I've used mesh smoothing. Um, so you can improve uh, the mesh quality uh, quite a bit by smoothing. I'll quickly show you uh, how this works. So we'll run everything until before the smoothing. Um, It generates the mesh uh, and you can see it que clearly differs from the smooth version. Uh, you have not so nice aspect ratios here uh, and you can actually apply smoothing schemes uh, by using the mesh um, mesh panel. We want to operate on 2D meshes and uh, here is the smoothing operation. Uh, so we can use different uh, smoothing algorithms here. I've tried the Laplacian before. Uh, let's 
use the mean ratio, for example, now uh, it's surface one, I select it uh, and apply the smoothing scheme and you see what comes out. You can try different smoothing schemes and see which one works best and creates a, a nice mesh for your domain. Okay, so much about the meshing procedure in this example. Uh, the XML input for the acoustic example, it's called transient.xml. So we see it's a transient um, simulation. Most of it is standard. We load the mesh file, we load the material file. Let's look uh, into the material file quickly. It's called mataku.xml. Uh, we see here we have the two relevant parameters. The ma material is called air. We define acoustic parameters, which are read by the acoustic PDE. Um, and we have a density given here and a compression modulus from which CFS computes the speed of sound, which is the only parameter in our wave equation uh, that is solved by the acoustic PDE. Um, then let's look at the relevant input section. Uh, here we have the acoustic definition. Note that we have specified here the formulation, ACU pressure. So we're using the pressure formulation. Uh, we use a single domain only. Um, and we use uh, a transient input signal. Uh, and actually, we prescribe a predefined um, sign burst input signal. Uh, so this is a predefined uh, function you can use in CFS. The T is our time variable. So this is incremented wh while the integration is being done. Um, and uh, the first parameter is a frequency. Uh, then we have uh, the duration of the burst, uh, three periods. And then we have a fade in and a fade out of one period each. So these are the four parameters uh, in the sign burst signal. You can see a little bit more in the slides. Uh, the other, another new thing you see here in the output results is the so-called sensor array. Uh, you can specify, this is an output result that you can use uh, throughout uh, CFS and it actually uh, defines the exact output regarding the finite element solution. So it doesn't uh, just uh, pick a neighboring node or integration point, it actually uses the answers functions um, to evaluate the sol solution exactly at the given points. Um, so which result should be evaluated? It's called ACU pressure. So we want to get the acoustic pressure. Uh, we specify a file name um, and we can also specify here uh, in the parametric list, uh, a list of coordinate points where we want to uh, update, uh, where we want to obtain um, these uh, outputs. Note that uh, here we only have one single x value and one single y value, so it doesn't span an array of points. It simply specifies a single point. Since we have the same start and stop value and the increment of zero. Uh, but you could use this in general to span an array of points uh, in space uh, where the outputs would be output into a history file. And this you can read later, for example, using Python. OK, so much for run file. The first thing we need to do is we have to generate the mesh file. Uh, this we have done already. Uh, the next thing is we run CFS. Here's our CFS command. We use the input file transient.xml we've just looked at. And our run is called run transient. So Let's execute this. CFS computes the transient simulation uh, of our 320 time steps. Uh, it finished in five seconds, and we're ready to look at the results. So let's look at uh, what has been created. We have the history output. Uh, let's look into the history directory. We've seen, we, we see we have a lot of files uh, that contain um, the sensor area outputs. Uh, they're called actually um, as we, we have specified uh, and then there is a dash and an index and the index is actually ranging uh, from zero uh, to 250 which are our time steps so let's have a look um, 
um, in one of these files, history and one of them. And in fact, uh, we have a few values in here. Uh, we have an element ID, uh, we have the original coordinates where we requested the output at, uh, this is X and Y coordinate. And then we have the local coordinates uh, where the, uh, the in the element, uh, which are these two values. And the last value finally is our uh, pressure value. Oh no, sorry, the pressure value is in the middle. Um, if you do import uh, export this with um, uh, with the option CSV in the in the file, you will actually get the header uh, in these history files, which tells you uh, what is uh, what is which value. Um, there's also the uh, script here, combine sensor array dot pi. You can use to combine. Uh, these values into a single file, since actually what you typically want is you want to plot this single value over time. Uh, and uh, this file actually reads all these index files and collects uh, this single pressure value and will write it out in a single file. So you can use this uh, combined sensor array Python script uh, to combine these sensor array results. Um, the next thing we can do is we can actually open up Paraview um, to look at our field results. So there's a state file provided, uh, which is called, uh, called POST. So we'll directly load the state file uh, and see how it looks like. So what you see here is the pressure results. Uh, let's go to the first time step. There's nothing happening yet. So we have uh, the pressure field here. Um, notes that we have uh, same, uh, same limits for positive and negative pressure. So uh, the gray value is actually the zero pressure. Um, and then we have two graphs here. Uh, there's a plot over line filter. Uh, which can be used to plot the field values over a line that you can specify here. You can specify 0 0.0 and 0 0.1 of the line. And uh, this is shown um, here in this graph. So this is the ac acoustic pressure over the length of the line. And we have also plot selection over time, uh, which is a selection you can do here with the selection toolbar, uh, you can select points and use the pl plot selection over time here to obtain a time plot. Let's see what happens if we increment our solution over time. Uh, actually, I will animate it and see what happens. So you see the waves are propagating outwards. Uh, you see it here in the spatial plot. And now this point actually is the monitor point, which is around here where my mouse is located. Now you see the waves are passing through. Um, they're propagating outwards. And once they hit the outer boundary, they are reflected back into our domain and interact with the field. Uh, you can see this beautifully now, uh, since we have not used any absorbing boundary condition. Uh, and now here at the monitor point, we have again the back coming waves that are uh, shown here at the monitor point. Uh, if we would continue the integration in time, these reflections would go back and forth all the time uh, since there's no damping assumed in the model. Okay, 